Hey, Kathy. Can you hear me? Oh, you got to unmute yourself um, and uh, your video. You just stopped your video. Oh. And then it's that microphone one. Okay. okay. Yep. You can uh, start. Sorry for that mix up. You're live now. Okay. All right. Okay. Thanks, Thanks, Jim. It doesn't look right though. Is it only supposed to be on? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Hi everyone. I'm Marissa Sullivan, manager of missions development. And we'd just like to say thank you to everyone for joining us today. Sorry about those few little mix ups that we had. We have our Wesley Village TV channel um, rocking and rolling going um, on a show with Ben and we have Chaplain Kathy here for 1.30 who's going to be presenting our Lunch and Learn session today on Finding Your Beauty. So we did have an in-person session earlier at 12.30 which we held out in the Wesley Village Pavilion and we recorded that one as well but due to the high winds and just the volume of noise that came from the wind we have moved everything indoors for the 1.30 session. So if you see anyone on campus who's heading over to the pavilion for this session, have them log on virtually um, using the link that I sent out in an email that I just sent um, shortly before. So this 1.30 session will be virtual only and we will have a link available to send out to anyone after the fact if there is anyone who does miss it today. But thanks for joining us. We're glad you could be here. And we're so glad Chaplain Kathy is here and able to speak with us today. So she's prepared some great information for us. Um, she has a lot of great resources and a great meditation to leave us in. So without further ado, I just would like to introduce her. She's our Director of Spiritual Life for United Methodist Homes. And if you don't know Chaplain Kathy, she is just a great resource for all of us. So I just want to say thank you to her and thanks, Kathy, for being here. Thank you, Marissa, for that lovely introduction. Hello, everybody. Well. Today has been fraught with all kinds of interesting obstacles, and yet there's, there's nothing that's going to stop us. So here we go. My name is Chaplain Kathy, as Marissa mentioned, and the title of today's Lunch and Learn is Finding the Beauty as My Glasses Steam Up. Okay, that's better. Have you ever noticed that some people in life like to complain that life is unfair because they're suffering? Others think, boy, was I lucky because something or other went my way. What if you actually have more control over your life than you think? What if it's really about your mindset and your perspective? Today's talk is called Finding the Beauty, and today we'll discuss some simple ideas for how we can find great beauty and goodness in each of our days. It can be quite difficult to see the beauty around us, particularly if we don't see the beauty inside of us. We're going to discuss some ways to find beauty, both within and without. The more we find beauty in our own lives and indeed create the beauty, the more we enjoy each day. And this leads us to have a peace and a joy and to live a truly love-filled life that is better than we ever could have imagined. I just want to let you know that I am going to mention God today, um, which is how I refer to that spirit, that source of love, that most holy, uh, how I refer to what some people call the universe, spirit, um, higher power. When I say God, I just invite you to think about the God of your understanding. And of course it's fine if you don't believe in God or you have great doubts about God <clears throat> for purposes of this talk anyway. But you are loved and accepted the way that you are, so come as you are. Today's talk assumes that you and God are in this together. But the talk 
has helpful tools for everyone and anyone. Nothing that you hear today will provide a magic wand. I only wish I could just put a magic wand over you and me and change all the things I want to change. But of course, it doesn't work that way. Finding the beauty is a lifelong journey, and it doesn't matter whether you finally achieve being the person you want to be. It's the journey itself that matters the most. Be patient, loving, and kind with yourself and with others. Remember, finding the beauty is a process rather than a destination. As we find the beauty, our own expectations will help us create our best selves and our best lives possible. My goals for today's session is that you will understand what I mean by the term finding the beauty, that you will have new knowledge and expanded knowledge about expectations and mindset and their impact on how and whether we find the beauty, and that you will have an experience of guided meditation. So what do I mean by finding the beauty? By beauty, I mean what we think of as beautiful inside ourselves and in the world around us, but it's more than that. It's seeing the good, the wonder, and the wonderful. It's about seeing the blessings. In a way, it's about connecting with God and seeing and experiencing God everywhere. Prosperity and abundance is already present and available to each of us, no matter the circumstances we find ourselves in, and really, no matter what we believe. Let's take coronavirus, for example. You may be thinking, how could there be any beauty, prosperity, or abundance in coronavirus? And those might not be the right terms for coronavirus, but the fact is, that even in coronavirus, we have all that we need inside of us, and we have help around us and help from God that we can be triumphant and victorious in our lives, even in coronavirus. We choose how we react or how we respond to coronavirus, and we want to be in a place where we respond by finding the beauty and changing our perspectives, we can respond to even coronavirus. When we don't have those tools, we react. We find ourselves bitty, bitter or angry, despairing or resentful. Maybe we feel hopeless. Or maybe we're appreciating what we do have. We're appreciating the things we took for granted we're finding this most difficult time as a time to learn and grow and expand. We can embrace the opportunities that are presented in the new normal, although I call it the new abnormal, or we can continue to fight against what life has presently become and focus only on what it was and what we wish it to be. We can find the beauty inside of us and outside of us. Finding the beauty inside us involves loving and accepting ourselves the way we are, but loving ourselves too much to just remain that way, to remain stuck or in a negative viewpoint or in a downward spiral. Instead, we can choose to notice and embrace our strengths. We can choose to notice and embrace our weaknesses. Yes, even our weaknesses are a point where we can learn something and change something. What we need to be mindful of is that we need to be kind and patient and loving to ourselves. And we need to stop judging ourselves and criticizing ourselves. And the same goes for other people. The bottom line is the self-talk that you talk matters. 
and it has a huge impact on how you experience your life. When I think of finding the beauty outside of us, we can find the beauty in every single person. Yes, even the cranky ones, there's beauty in there. We can intentionally see beauty in nature and isn't fall a wonderful time to find the beauty in nature? We can be intentional about being grateful and appreciative, looking for beauty, wonder, grace, looking for blessings, finding joy, and noticing all the benefits that are afforded to us. The key to finding the beauty is expectations and mindset. Let's talk about the upside. Finding the beauty is a bit like going on a treasure hunt. And I have some fond memories of my daughters, Sarah and Rachel. Uh, it was one of their birthdays. Let's say it was Sarah's birthday. And I got several gifts and I decided to make it into a treasure hunt. So I had clues and Sarah and Rachel gleefully raced around trying to find the gifts. I made sure that the clues were easy enough and not too hard, and they had a ball. The great thing is that when we understand that we can control our response, that we can create a beautiful life, that we can attract back to us what we give out, then we find out we are in charge of giving ourselves the clues so that we will find the treasure, find the beauty. I'd like to share some quotes with you that I found that I think are very useful about the role of expectations, perspective, and creating for ourselves a life of beauty. The first one is from the Buddha. What you think you become, what you feel, you attract. What you imagine, you create. The second quote comes to a spiritual leader named Dr. Wayne Dyer, and he's most known for the book, The Power of Intention. He says, if you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. And finally, Henry David Thoreau tells us this, the question is not what you look at, but what you see. So I don't have a live audience at this point. Um, the last one just had to go, and so I'm gonna remove my mask now, which will be easier for me and for you. Our expectations and mindset play a huge role in our hopefulness and our happiness. For example, we must choose to be optimistic. It doesn't happen just naturally, usually, although I suppose you could be born that way. Well, in my case, my father was quite a pessimist. And when I was a young girl, I would notice that he was making negative statements and he was expecting the worst to happen. And I began to say to him, Dad, why do you think something bad is going to happen? Or why do you think the worst thing is going to happen? And he would respond each time the same way. He would say, I'm not a pessimist. I'm just a realist. Well, you know what? I decided I do not want to be a realist or a pessimist if this was the example. And so I decided for myself I wanted to be an optimist. So I've been on a lifelong journey to be an optimist, and the truth is, all these years later, I'm optimistic a good deal of the time, but often, too, I fail. And as I said before, this process of finding the beauty is a journey, not a destination, and I'm on an optimism journey, and it really changes the way I look at things. Now, I'd like you to remember back to our webinar with Dr. Dan Tomasulo on learned hopefulness. In the book that we received, he reminds us of something very important. He says, 
Learned hopefulness is continually shifting perspective towards something more hopeful. Shifting perspective is the fundamental skill. When we are invited to shift our perception just slightly and look at it through a different lens, something changes. We see the world differently, with more positivity, and respond to it in kind. What you were looking at never changed. You just looked at it differently. We can't change what we see, but we can choose how we perceive it. You know that expression, expect the best and be prepared for the worst? I think a lot of us err on the side of preparing for the worst, so much so that we actually are kind of expecting the worst. And we say we're expecting the best, but when we expect the worst, that's what's going to be coming into our lives, because that's what we're sending out. I invite myself and each of us to expect the best and be ready for whatever comes. How often do we say inside of ourselves or even out loud, it's not fair. This is something that we need to let go of. It involves comparisons and somebody's always going to have more, be more, have more success, more luck, more whatever. Our experience is ours, and we have great blessing in our lives. We just need the eyeglasses to see it. Whatever happens in our lives, we can handle in a better way when we choose to reframe things, to see things in a different way. It allows us to handle ourselves well, no matter what happens. When something happens and it turns out our expectations aren't met, typically we find ourselves angry. And really underneath that is either hurt or disappointment. Nobody wants to feel that way. The thing is, though, when we have begun the work of seeing grace and offering grace, of reshifting our perspective, assuming the best of the other person, for example, and so many more things. It is then that we can respond instead of react. And let me tell you, when I am able to respond, things go so much better. But when I react, watch out. I may say things or do things that I don't even mean, and they're things that hurt other people and I can't take them back. So, undertaking the process of finding the beauty allows us to love ourselves more, to love others more, and to respond rather than react. It allows us to be present in the moment. We don't have to worry about what other people are thinking about us, or what we have to say, or what's gonna happen next. We just expect that whatever unfolds is going to have within it blessing and grace and beauty. When we shift our focus and our priority to finding the beauty, it helps us go with the flow. We don't have to be in charge of what happens. We don't have to try to control other people or control situations. For me personally, I hand it over to God, and then that allows me to go with the flow, knowing that I'm cared for by a good and loving God. Focusing on the beauty helps us be better listeners. It helps us to be more patient, more kind, and compassionate with both ourselves and others. And as we appreciate ourselves and others and all that is, we find ourselves so grateful 
even in the worst time of our lives, we find ourselves grateful. When we can be open to a change of attitude and a change of perspective, it's like, I don't know, we create something where there wasn't something before, and we see all the possibilities. I think one of the most dramatic ways I learned about changing my perspective was because one day I was sitting at a red light, and instead of sitting there impatiently, like I'm prone to do, I was looking around, and I was noticing things. And then I noticed the bumper sticker on the car ahead of me. It said, expect that something wonderful is about to happen. That really hit me. And I thought to myself, is that how I think? And the answer was, absolutely not. And then I thought to myself, what if I chose to believe that something wonderful is about to happen? What would my life be like then? Ever since that day, it is my intention to live each moment believing that something wonderful is about to happen. I can't do it all the time, and that's okay. Um, I accept myself where I'm at, and the days that I'm able to do it, oh my gosh, the wonder and the beauty and the grace unfolds. So much so, I can't even remember all the wonderful things that happened in a single day. Now I want to talk for a moment about the downside of what our expectations and mindset can create. Let's say we have unrealistic and negative expectations. This leads us to what's called shooting on ourselves, or we should on others. It's kind of like um, an inner critical voice. It might be the voice of one of your parents saying, Kathy, you shouldn't have done that. Kathy, you should have done this. How often do we should on ourselves? And how often do we do that to others? Unrealistic expectations lead us to disappointment, regret, and feeling guilty. Unrealistic and negative expectations lead to experiencing in our lives the very thing that we don't want to happen. The thing we fear the most happens when we have unrealistic and negative expectations because as we put it out, that's what comes in. There's a couple other expectations that a lot of people have, and I'm just going to talk about a few. One is the idea, things will always go my way. Well, that's just not possible. And if that's our expectation, it sets us up for such disappointment, such discouragement. And sometimes we even feel hopeless. How about the opposite? Things will never go my way. Well, I actually know some people that feel this way. And the thing is, is it's not true that things will never go your way. And so if we believe that and we put that out, that's what comes in and becomes our reality. Think about other kinds of things that you expect that maybe aren't working for you that well. Like, others will do things the same way you do. That's a good one for those of us at work or anywhere. If I expect my workmate to do things exactly the way I would do it, well, that's just going to lead to miscommunication, to hurt, to disappointment, to a lack of collaboration. In short, we're not going to be able to live out our values. So I really encourage you to begin to notice your thoughts. It all starts with self-awareness and noticing your thoughts. And not judging yourself for them, but just notice. And choose one thought that you notice as a pattern that's not serving you well. And I suggest 
you think to yourself, well, what could I think differently? And begin to practice that and see how you change. And as you change, your circumstances change. So now we're, we come to the meditation portion. And I hope I've left enough time. I think I have. And I'm going to take us on a meditative journey to the most beautiful, peaceful, lovely place that any of us could imagine. Perhaps it's a place that looks like either of these pictures. Perhaps your beautiful place looks nothing like that at all. And the really great thing about this meditation is you're going to create where you want to be, the place where you most easily feel blessed and feel grace and see and experience beauty. Visualization is a powerful method that allows us to use our imagination to relax ourselves. Now, of course, I don't think you would do this when you're driving, but it's definitely not a good idea, particularly not if you're going to close your eyes. Anyway, we're going to start our meditation now. So wherever you are, I would like you to sit comfortably in a comfortable chair. Hopefully you have access to that. If you feel comfortable, I'd like you to put your feet flat on the floor and just rest your hands in your lap comfortably. You want to do what's comfortable for you. And ideally, you want to be sitting upright. But I have to admit to you, when I meditate at home, I'm in a semi-reclined uh, position, and that's what works best for me. So whatever makes you relaxed and comfortable, that's the best thing for you to do. All you have to do is listen to my voice and follow my direction. Now take a moment to sit back and relax. Gently close your eyes or leave them open if that's more comfortable. I recommend closing your eyes. Breathe deeply into your abdomen and breathe out. Breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth. One more time. In. Now I'd like you to scan your body and just notice if there's any pain, any place of tension. And where you notice that, I want you to picture breathing in calm and breathing out stress. Breathe in peace and bring and breathe out anxiety. Breathe in and breathe out. Just continue to do the, this until you find your body relaxing. And if it's not relaxing, don't worry. If you fall asleep, don't worry. If your mind wanders, don't worry. Just notice your thought and then return back to the meditation. Return back to your own breathing. As you breathe, allow your body to completely and fully relax. Picture stress flowing out of you with each breath. Notice your body is becoming limp and comfortable. Relax the tension in your eyebrows. Let go of the tension in your lips. Let the tension in your eyes go. Even let go of the tension in your mouth. Once you feel completely relaxed and centered, start to bring yourself to one of your favorite, peaceful, beautiful places. This could be a place you've been before like a silent redwood grove with cool shade and towering ancient trees that protect you in your mammoth forest, or a white
great sea where the ocean waves gently lap the shore. And the smell of the sea makes you feel at home. It could be a place built entirely in your imagination, swinging on a swing, standing on a swaying bridge, watching a battling book. You decide. Is it raining? Is it snowing? Is it a sunset, a sunrise, a rainbow? Say, take some time to imagine this place. Imagine it in detail. Imagine it completely. Now that you have your special place in mind, place yourself into the middle of the picture you've created. Put yourself into your beautiful place. Take a walk, sit down, lie down, it's up to you. Look at the lovely, peaceful, and relaxing surroundings. What do you see around you? You need not answer the question aloud. Just look around and notice what you see. What is the most beautiful sight? What do you see that relaxes you? See all that you can see. Now notice the smells in this place. Is it the smell of trees? The salty air of the ocean side? Maybe it's the scent of baking chocolate chip cookies. You decide. Bring the scent into your visualization. Now reach out and touch something that's attractive and peaceful to you. How does it feel? Is it soft to your touch? Feel the ground under you. Take a moment to listen. Take a moment to feel the air. Maybe it's rustling. Do you feel the, the rustle? Take a moment to listen. What are the sounds in your place of beauty? Is it birds chirping? or ocean waves, or beautiful flowers that sway in the wind. Maybe there's music from an ancient flute, or some other music. Maybe you hear the voice of your dearest friend, soothing and calming you. Whatever you hear, whatever you see, whatever you touch, just take a moment now to enjoy it. I wish we could stay in this scene as long as we want to. But we need to get ready to come back into the here and now. You can change the scene as you wish. You can create the scene that you want. Remember that there is always a special place for you. You can come back whenever you want. It's not something you can lose. It's always with you. Feel
feel the relaxation right now. Now when you're ready, let the scene dissolve into the back of your mind. Allow yourself to come back into the room where you are seated. Wiggle your toes, wiggle your fingers, maybe pull your head a little bit, and when you are ready, open your eyes. Take a moment to notice how relaxed you feel right now. Then slowly, attentively, lovingly, move on with your daily life. So that's the end of our meditation. But remember, you can do this at home or anywhere for that matter. And it doesn't need to take a long time. But when you do this for yourself, not only does it relax and calm you, but it helps you to just get in touch with the beauty. So I'm about to wrap up this session, but I want to give you some ideas for going deeper. If you'd like to learn more and go deeper, I encourage you to read Chapter 3 of our Learn Hopefulness book by Dr. Thomas Sulo. It's called Noticing Beauty, Benefits, and Blessings. Read it. Think about it. Do the exercises. Think some more. Contemplate. And then decide for yourself if you're ready to begin to change your perspective. I suggest you choose just one perspective to work on at first and commit to doing this daily. Put a plan in action. You might want to journal about it. As you do this, I guarantee your outlook and your inlook will begin to shift. When you're ready, choose another, and then another. Remember, it's about the journey, not the destination. But you have everything you need to find the beauty that's already inside you, that's already in everyone else, that's already in everyone. Also, I'll be posting a resource list to the internet, and you can find it under the Spiritual Life tab. Thanks so much for joining me today. May each of us find great beauty around us, great beauty within us, and may we learn to create beauty in our lives by changing our perspective. Last but not least, I want to offer myself to you as a resource I'm in the process of learning hopefulness. I'm in the process of finding the beauty. And I've been working on this for a while. And don't hesitate to reach out to me if I could be helpful to you or supportive to you in your own journey, either in finding the beauty or some other journey that you're on. I'm here for each of you in whatever way I can serve you best. And I hope from I hope I hear from you soon. Thanks so much for tuning in today.